You're on. Okay, I'm gonna take the storm off, and these storm windows are in really bad shape. I've never seen anything like it. They were not mechanically attached to the corners. They had epoxy glue in each corner that held them together. It looked like JB weld. And they're so flimsy, I think I can go ahead and get the glass out. Just by flexing the thing. I'm rather afraid it's gonna fall out once it's once it's free. And you can see what kind of shape the glazing is on the old windows. It's just terrible. And this one's not even exposed to the weather. This is under the porch. But it does get the evening sun. Yeah, it gets some evening sun. And it's just attached with screws around it. All right, so we'll come back in just a few minutes. So that's just the first step in replacing a window with a replacement window. If you have storm windows, first step is remove storm window. Okay, the wind, uh, storm window is now all from the exterior of the window. So let's go inside and see the next step. All right, tools that we all need. I like this painter's tool. It's stiff and I sharpen the edge of it and it has this point on it that you can get in behind this molding. Uh, you'll need a pry bar. screwdriver, a pry bar, you'll need a drill, a drill, and a drill bit. This drill bit matches the screws that came with the window. So you want to get one that's about the same size or a little uh, smaller? About the same size as the inner thread diameter. This one is a one eighth, one eighth of an inch. And if you're over in Europe, you probably have better hardware than I do because these screws that came with the window are soft. Yeah, and tell them why we need to, to um, we need the drill. This well, house it, is really old. Yeah, this it's not old by European standards, but uh, all the, this is a 60 year old house. The, when they build houses here in the United States, the wood is only partially dried. I know it says it's kiln dried, but it usually has about 30% moisture in it. It makes it really easy to drive fasteners and build a house. But as this ages, it gets drier and drier and drier and hardens up. It's really hard to drill into this uh, fur that is behind this. So you pre-drill so you, that the right. screw will actually go in because you yeah. can't just screw a screw in. At least not in this house. No. <laughs> and um, let's see. I have an awl. Yes, and he has an awl to um, mark the holes. And you're going to need a pencil. Yeah. I'm and gonna, I'm going to need all that if I find it. <laughs> yeah. So we thought we'd go over the tools. If something else comes up as we're going along, we'll mention it. You could use a 16-penny uh, finish nail instead of an awl if you don't have one. So he's going to show you how to remove this trim piece that you need to take off. And I just have a little shim that I'm using to protect my wood as I pull things apart. All right, so we'll come right back when Scott's about ready to go. Uh, the inside molding here was coped around this molding. 
So this is a, a straight cut on this piece of molding on both ends. And when they built the house, they just used a coping saw to match the end of this profile to match the profile on this. Now carpenters all have miter saws or compound miter saws and they miter these corners, but in an older home, it's real typical to see that coped. So these two will have to come out before this comes out. And I'm gonna start where I see a crack. Let me zoom in here. See so I have a flat side to this and a beveled side. And you want to go really, really slow. Yeah. Don't try to force it because it'll break it and you do not want to have to cut trim again to fit the window. It just adds more time. So take your time and work this loose real easy. And see, once he gets that open, he's got his shim and his pry yeah. bar. And I want to protect this piece. Kind of doing this left handed. And he's kind of looking for where the nail is. Yeah, I found the nail. You just work your way up. Right. All right, that one's down. Uh. Okay, this is what I mean by coped. They used a coping saw to match this up to this profile. So I'm going to save and reuse all this trim. And it's kind of interesting how they nailed it. They, they got three through this cove here and then several through the face of it. So but most of them pulled through, which is what you yeah. really want. You don't want to try to uh, see how that one's got a nail there, but he's not going to hit it because it'll blow out the other side and then you'll have a hole to deal with. That's where your fencing pliers come in handy. And those are fencing pliers for anybody that's never seen any. Anywhere between 13 and $25, depending on where you buy them. And We've used the devil out of them. It's a hammer, it's a wire cutter, it's a staple and nail remover, and it has this point for getting underneath staples or just digging into anything that you want to pry. And the center is also a crimper. That's right. So. Protecting the wood. And you really get a firm grip. And just pull it through. And then that way you don't blow out this huge hole on the other side. This gives you a bunch of leverage to get hold of that nail and hold still <laughs> and, and pull it out so yeah. that's a that's a real handy tool all right so we're going to set that aside and he's going to do the other side and we'll come back when he's done the top okay just remember slow and easy somewhere in here. Yeah. There
I don't want to tear up this tip that's on that coat in. And there's a nail right in here. So I'm going to pull down to bend that nail. So that point clears. That's right. So I didn't tear my point up. There's a bunch of paint garbage on there. I can't see the windows washing it out. Oh. So I didn't tear this up. There's a bunch of paint garbage on it, but good. Good, good. It'll need patching. All right, and then he pulls the nails out because see it leaves, it leaves nails. And he uses the shim to protect the wood again and puts it under the pry bar or the pliers, whichever he's gonna use here. Get a hold on it. My shim broke on me earlier. Uh oh. All right. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to remove the nails and then we'll work at the top piece. We'll be back shortly. I'm breaking that paint bond. Oh, you'll need a ladder. <laughs> What's this, about a four foot, five foot? It's a four foot ladder, it says on the side. It's, it's real handy for indoor use. And it's it's lightweight, it doesn't weigh a whole lot. And it's hilarious when Greg fell on it and broke it. <laughs> he was little. Yeah, that scared me. The so, mama didn't find it hilarious. I thought it was hilarious when it came out when you dropped that fire extinguisher and set it off. It had that white stuff everywhere. It looked like the garage was on fire with all that powder coming out. Right there. You just have to find the edge of that one piece of trim. He's cutting through the paint. Cause like you said, he sharpened the edge on that tool. So you have to be careful when using it, but yeah. it's a marvelous tool. So I have the flat side against this and the beveled side, this naturally. Show them where fine. this is because I had you zoomed in. Uh, yeah. So the. The flat side is against this woodwork, and this beveled side is against the piece I'm trying to get off. So it naturally plows through and breaks that paint bond and pries it down a little. But you have to be careful because this, this edge is thin. It's easy to break this. And they nailed this in the cove, which is hard on it as well. And yes, I broke one on another window earlier. Mm -mm. So even if you're careful, you can break this. I glued it back together. He's just going to try to get the window out of his way a bit. Ooh, there we go. And he 
he's got some nails to pull. Scott says you also need a little block of wood. I'll need that later. Oh, for later. Yeah. <laughs> so when I put a new window in, I want the new window to butt up against this window stoop here tightly. And I want it to follow, I want it to be along this line with this aluminum. Cause that's where the old trim. That's right. That's we'll where go the, back. That's where the old trim was. So he just draws a line right along the window. Use that aluminum on the window. So instead of trying to measure from this edge oh. to this edge, instead of trying to measure from this edge to this edge, you know this is rounded. It's got paint build up on it. That's not a good point to measure from. So it'd be difficult to measure from here over to here from here over to here so it's just easier to just go ahead and mark your line it's going to be hidden anyway no one's going to see that line That's you're going right. to go all the way down right so that gets you away from trying to transfer that measurement to an edge that's hard to measure to and you're not dealing with all these fractions and, and trying to visualize where everything goes just mark it with a pencil and you only did the top half of the window because you're going to make the bottom half come right. tight to the yeah. window sill. All right. So open from the top and the bottom. So yeah. they're like a sandwich in the middle. I like to leave a little more up here than down here because this piece is hidden behind the stop. This piece on the bottom is not. So I'm just going to break this out. And he folds it up. And I'm going to fold it up. you got to be careful, you guys. If you want to, you can wear gloves. It's just these little tiny nails hold that in. If you don't fold this up, this is going to flop around all over the place and you're going to lose control. He needs something to get in there. I want some spot in there. Cause we're taping. That's why you fold it up at the bottom. All right, it's loose in the frame. So he's just gonna manhandle it and jerk the window right out. 
All right. And that's it. That's it. Now it's out of there. We'll take that to the street and we'll be right back. This stop was for the upper sash on the old window. It's going to be in our way. It's held in by one, two, three nails. Might want to get a piece of wood to protect it. Of course, I think it's all going to be hidden anyway. It is. That one's in there good. Yeah, it's going to fight me. That one last night about fell out. There we go. There, you, you're getting it loose now. There's 60 plus years of paint buildup too. You can see the 1960s green paint. There you go. So it may be difficult. I'm gonna chisel the rest of it out. <laughs> That's acting like they put glue on it or something. It is. I'm telling you guys, last night, the one we took off last night just popped right off. It didn't have but two nails in it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna get a chisel and we'll just chisel that flush so it'll be out of the way. He pulled the nails out and then did a little additional prying and it's looking like it's gonna come on loose so he won't have to chisel. Which is nice. But that almost looks like there's a gap up there instead of uh, just attaching. Or maybe there is, there's an arm. Oh, okay. Oh, that's... That's so funny how that fought us. Well, I think the plank's hauling on pretty good too. Yeah. All right. So that's that's out. He's got some nails to pull. I warned him. Just wanted to show you, you might have some difficulty, but it'll come out. All right. All right. These hardened edges of paint, they'll cut you just like a knife. That's a couple nails, I think. Yeah, these. this is all that holds the window in is the molding, the trim, and two nails at the top and two at the bottom. So if you ever wondered why they blow out in hurricanes. That's why. That's why. They ain't much holding one in. And sorry about the boy next door noise. Okay. Ready? Okay. Yeah. This window frame is not plumb with the rest of the house. You can see that drywall behind there? Yeah. And so on an old house, you're gonna have gaps and problem places that you're just gonna have to deal with. Now I'm gonna butt my new window up against the window stoop and here so I don't have to redo any of the interior trim. But you might wind up with an ugly gap on the exterior side. And there's some nice ways to deal with that too. So you just work around problems in an old. So I like to close these because the glass is rigid and this vinyl is flexible. And if you put the sashes in place and latch it, it makes for a much more rigid assembly. There's a screw hole here. I show. And one on the other side. You see that little hole right there? That's where the screw is going to go that holds the window in place. This has four screws in it. 
And if you want really detailed instructions, you can go to Anderson, uh, American Craftsman's Anderson Windows. I'm Actually, going. these are by Ply Gem, not Anderson, American Craftsman. Maybe they got bought out, who knows. I'm lining this block of wood up with my line that I scribed. To get it straight. And generally he has my other hand to kind of hold the window in the spot. And now he's sticking the awl in the hole. And he's gonna push it in. Just to make a little hole. That's going to mark where I'm going to drill my pilot holes for the screws. And then he'll do the same thing on this other side, which is easier to film. So, so he's lining that up with his line, and then pulling the window toward it. It's just using that all to make a little hole. That's what you need the little block of wood for, huh? Yeah. Because you get parallax there, it looks like you're not close enough, but you actually are. Yeah. A hammer. A hammer. Pretty helpful. You just don't want to hit the glass. Just hit the all. You see, now he's made a little hole up there. And now he'll open the window and find these holes that are on the bottom. And when he does the bottom one, he's just gonna make sure the bottom of that window is pulled tight to the, um, the threshold there. And there's little jibber jabbers there that he just pushed up out the way. Pulling that in as tight as he can get it. Finding the hole where the screw's gonna go and making him a little all spot. If you need to, you can always move the screen out of your way if you need to. Uh-oh, I didn't film it, but that's okay. They all know what you're doing. All right, so now... We'll pre-drill my holes. Pre-drill the holes. So to do that, he's going to latch the window back to give it more sturdiness. And he's just going to lift it out and set it aside and pre-drill his holes, okay? These windows aren't super light, but they're not, you know, they're not like something I couldn't lift. I could lift them if I had to. <laughs> so now he's got to find his all hole. So see, it left me a hole there. It's a little teeny hole there. So there's my witness mark tells me where to drill. That shows you how hard this old wood is. Then we'll go up to the top. He's got a little hole up there. He's gonna drill into that one. There it goes. So it does take a little strength to push that drill into this old hard, hard wood of this house. That one wasn't too bad. And then you'll put one more in there, then we'll set the window in and screw it into place. And then it's all a matter of fitting stuff, but... Before we set the window in again, there's a couple pieces that come with the window at least this brand that we have to add to the window. There's a little piece that goes on the bottom and a piece that sits yeah. on the top. This uh, sill is typically at a 10 to a 12 degree angle. 
And so there's a spacer piece fits into the bottom that you can cut to fit. Which Scott has to cut that. Yeah, right. Oh, this is good lighting right here. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's ridges in this. I don't know if it is or not. There it got. It's picking it up a little bit. I'm and when I measured this out, all my windowsills are the same. This center ridge so is where I'm going to cut. Up the second line from the bottom. Yeah. And you'll need to, before you cut it, you need to drill a weep hole here. And I'm going to use a quarter inch drill bit on each side to drill a weep hole. So if any moisture does get trapped behind this window, it'll have an escape route and can dry out. And I'm going to rip this on the table saw, but you can cut this with 10 snips, uh, a hacksaw, uh, and this lower edge is going to get caulked anyway, so it doesn't matter if that's a little bit rough. So if you don't have the exact same tools that I have, there's a lot of ways you can cut this and, and make this work. All right, so I guess we're heading to the shop. Yeah, oh, there's one other piece. All right. This cap fits on the top. And once you've got the window set in place and screwed in, then you work that up so that it's, it's up in there. It fills this gap at the top. And Scott's cutting some insulation to add a little bit more insulation yeah. <laughs> around the window. Yeah, I have some uh, insulation I'm going to slip in there. And then on this one, you can see I stuffed in some insulation around the cracks. I don't know if they can see it or not. There you can see it. That yellow stuff is the insulation you used around this window. And I'm going to patch all this up. I'm going to put some filler in, in this. This is an old house. There's no telling how many curtains and shades and blinds have been hung up on these. So we're just going to fill that in and do a little sanding and clean this up good before we put it back in. So. All right. Out to the garage. To the shop we go. To the shop.